Chapter 1, we understand now, uh, that was talking about really how to be sincere. Fearing the Most High and understanding and getting the peace of that wisdom. You know what I'm saying? Because the whole book of Sirach is the wisdom of Jesus. It's on Sirach or Ecclesiastes. You follow? So it's really, it's wisdom. So we opened up talking about wisdom. And that wisdom is going to start with fearing the Lord, which is deep. Fearing the Lord the right way, right? Which if you watched the last video, you got it. Fearing the Lord the right way is what's going to allow you to act, uh, um, understand what that wisdom is and really get your mind functioning correctly with the fear of the Lord. Sirach 2 and 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, right? So if you come in to serve the Lord, you come in to say, you come into the truth. It, and you guess what? You prepare yourself to serve the Lord when you're getting dressed and you're about to go keep the Shabbat with your brothers or sisters. You preparing to serve the Lord when you're hey, when you getting dressed, when you're about to go keep a feast day. Because you keeping these feast days, you keeping the Shabbat, you're preparing yourself to go serve the Lord. You had the Shabbat, you had the feast days, you're, you're, you're serving the Lord, man. Right, you know, this precept is a, it's fire to bring up for somebody that's first coming into the truth. Now, listen, man, you see these commandments and you know how it's about to go. Hey, listen, you got to prepare yourself, for real. Man, you're going you gonna to go through some stuff. I done had people tell me they've been catching hell since the age of four, man. And if in-depth stories, <laughs> in-depth stories back to back, man. Brothers was robbers, murderers, thieves, you know, had a... Uh, uh, Fight spirits and all of them, you know what I'm saying? Like, live dangerous lifestyles, man. That's really how it goes. People really live dangerous lifestyles in the time past. But you come to the truth, you have to prepare your soul for those same temptations to work on your mind, right? Coming out of Babylon, coming out, uh, coming out of captivity, all these other things. They come back and they work on your mind. Brothers in the truth like to call it the old man, right? That old man continually comes back to work on your mind. That's really that the temptation that you gotta fight. Because if you're really serving the Lord, that's, that's what it's going to come to Because you're a new man You're a new creature That's 2 Corinthians 6 Right in 17 um, Let's read on uh, Sirach chapter 2 and verse 2 It says Set thy heart alright Set thy heart alright And constantly endure It says And make not haste In the time of trouble man Now this is two different things Right let's, let's break it down Set thy heart alright And constantly endure man You have to set your heart alright And constantly endure right, Let's get that in uh, first job uh, I want that in 1 John 3 and 21. Let's get this reset. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 21. Right? Uh, so I drink my apographer. Alright, this is 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 21. It says, um, Beloved, it says, it reads, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God? What does that mean? If your heart don't condemn yourself, I love this precept. If your heart don't condemn yourself, a lot of times I have a video called um, uh, "Am I Going Off?" It's called um, an explanation of examination. Am I going off? In that video, I talk about this. Now, if you're questioning yourself and you're doing something and you're like, "Ah, should I be doing this? This says this and this says this. Ah, it's a toss up." Now, brother, you gotta have some discernment. If, discernment. If you've been in the truth for a damn uh, more than a year, or if you've been in the truth for X amount of time, you understand that, and you know certain lessons, and you know how certain things goes according to the commandments and according to the laws, brother, you should have a certain amount of dis you know a discernment in your mind. Now, this is the thing: when you when you start damn questioning yourself, like ah, is this right? Is this right? That is your heart condemning yourself. That's what that is. You're second guessing yourself. Your heart is condemning yourself. Or you could you could have just went the hell off, and now you're like, damn, I feel so sorry for it. That's also your heart condemning yourself. Both of those is like your heart condemning yourself, right? Now let's read this again. First John three twenty one, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, meaning like yeah, this is full confidence. This is full confidence, right? The Lord said, Sirach, set thy heart aright. Full confidence, man. Your heart not condemning yourself. I know I'm coming out the camp. 
and I, I come out here and I yell at these people every damn weekend. Or I got these things on my shirt. People keep asking me what it is. Or I, I'm making videos, talking to myself while I'm driving in the middle of the road. I don't know what's going on, right? You might see it like you're crazy, right? Paul said we made fools for Christ's sake. You follow? And that's how, that's the scripture, that, that's, uh, that's the comfort that you get from the scriptures, right? It's the spirit that's on you that make you do certain things. But then guess what? You come back to the scriptures and you justify it. Right? You go out there every weekend and yell at somebody and you come to the scriptures and they're justified. The Lord justified it for you. Why? Because your heart don't condemn itself, condemn itself right? And then it says, um, and then it says, then have we confidence toward God. Then you're gonna have that confidence toward God, right? Then you're gonna have that confidence toward God when you understand and you man, you, you get your mind working, and you understand like there's no excuses, you follow, right? And, um you understand the commandments, you understand the laws, there's no reason for you to second guess yourself, for you to feel bad for certain things. If your heart condemn yourself, hey, if your heart not condemn yourself, you got confidence. So you guys, so in Sirach 2, it says, hey, set thy heart all right, right? Set thy heart all right. Meaning like, get your damn mind right. <laughs> That's basically what that means. Basically what Sirach said. Sirach said, get your damn mind right, right? Uh, Sirach 2, uh, let's read on in verse number, um, uh, Sirach 2 and verse number 2, set thy heart right and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble, man. Make not haste in the time of trouble. I'm going to read on because it's going to further explain uh, make not haste in the time of trouble. Sirach 2 and 3, it's lucky. It says, cleave unto him and depart not away. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Right? Now, hold on. I want to read on because Sirach kind of built it on this, right? And that's kind of how Sirach wrote through the Spirit. It's like, okay, boom. He said, make not haste in the time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Right? Because you, you, you going through something crazy. You're going through something heavy. Right? And then, oh, no, I got to move. Oh, no, I got to do this. I got to do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you make it haste in the time of trouble. Right? But, hey, guess what? If you was cleaved unto the Lord from the jump, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be doing that because you'll be on the same accord that's real spiritual it's like okay boom say you know you having a good day you having a good week you having a good week everything's going cool everything's going fine this is a good week but in that same good week you didn't made your videos you didn't pray you didn't read you didn't fast it it's a good week spiritually and carnally right your funds is okay your friends is teaching you okay you follow you you know your companions or whatever Right, you, you, you spiritually you've been doing what you're supposed to be doing. Guess what you did? You clay you clayed unto him and departed not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Right? Because that's when you're gonna be increased at your last end, right? That's the truth. Right, that's the positive, that's the positivity of it. Let's read on. All right, verse number what is this? Four. It says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, it says, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. You see that? Then you got to be patient when you change to a lower state. So guess what? Yeah, you just had a good week. Yeah, you just had a good couple of days. But guess what? You on the same accord with the most high. When you was having a good week, you was having a good day, you were doing what you were supposed to be doing. Spiritually, you're on one accord with the most high. So then when you get changed to a lower state, you're patient. You understand what's going on. But like, okay, boom, we keep arguing. We keep arguing. We can't stop damn arguing. Okay, boom. We just change to a lower state. Let's not be hasty, right? Let's work these things out. Let's, uh, uh, how do they say it? Let's tighten up these loose screws, right? You know, throw out your elbow. You do what you got to do. You make it work. You understand that? Do not be hasty when you change to a lower state. Because even when you're at your top, and when you're at your top, you're having a good week. You're having a good day. You're having a good few days. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing, physically and spiritually. Then you get changed to a lower state. You're patient. You understand, okay, boom, this has got to happen. We're in captivity. Stop thinking every week is just going to get better and better and better. Every damn week, you're not going to have an off week. Stop thinking you're going to get hit with a bill that you forgot the damn pay, and now something damn popped up. Yeah, you're one of your friends that it came up with a conspiracy out of nowhere, and now you got now your name is tainted, and you got to do something. You, we're in captivity, brother. It's going to happen, right? So with that mindset, with that actual understanding, be patient when that stuff comes to pass. You follow? That's what Cyrus is teaching. Let's read on. Verse 5. For a goal is tried in the fire, an acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Right? An acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So you got to go through it at the end of the day. You follow? Verse 6. Believe in him. It says, and uh, he will uh, help thee. It says, order thy way aright and trust in him. 
order that right all right right set that heart away right order that way right right so, I mean like get your damn mind together and do what you're supposed to do <laughs> that's, that's what Cyrex is teaching uh, let's go to Proverbs chapter 3 and verse uh what's that 25 Proverbs 3 and 25 it says um be not afraid of sudden fear neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh so don't be afraid of the sudden fear right because sudden fear like you might be fear feeling fearful you might be you know something's going on then that's a spirit that hop on you to have you feeling fearful right don't be up don't be afraid of that even though it's sudden when it cometh right or the desolation when it's not you follow don't be afraid of these things right that's what that's what the scriptures are telling you that's really what Sirach is teaching right let's read verse number 26 um for the lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken right and the lord is your confidence why you're supposed to be cleaving unto him from the jump right that's what we read in Sirach. so let's read on the, let's go back to the book of Sirach. Right? don't be ashamed of it when it's something when it's something just pop the hell up right and you ready to damn and fall out the truth um it says uh Let's read on. Verse number seven. Yea, it's like it says. It reads, "Yea, that fear the Lord, wait for His mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall." Right. So wait for the Lord's mercies and go not aside, lest ye fall. That's a mighty precept, right? Wait for the Lord's mercies, go not aside, lest ye fall. Yea, that fear the Lord, hope for good, right? And for everlasting joy and mercy. So that's what you're supposed to be hoping for. You hope for the good things, right? We in this truth. Stuff gets hard, but you hope for eternal life. You hope that everything is gonna be okay. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Now you might be understanding, like, okay, yeah, all hell's gonna break loose. But you you hope for you hope for the uh, the, the positivity. You hope for the love. You hope for the communication, right? You hope for the the, the laughter, the joy. You understand that? And if you're in the right mind, you hope for the destruction of the enemies. But hey, guys, what? That you and say peace. <laughs> you follow? All right, let's read on. Um, uh, verse number 10. Oh, this is a mighty precept, right? Verse number 10. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust? Oh, slucky. My bad. Uh, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom? Did he ever despise that calleth upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering, and very pitiful, and forgive and forgive us uh, like and forgiveth the sins, and saveth saveth in time of affliction. Right? Let's get a precept. Right. So at the end of the day, if you putting your whole foot forward, that's when the most high not gonna forsake you, man. That's when you're not gonna forsake you. When you really doing it. Now, we understand we fall short. You got to have that just balance of falling short, man. You got to understand that. You got to have that just balance of falling short. If you are sincerely, with your whole mind, right? Fearing the Lord correctly, according to our last video. With your whole mind, if you're doing the things that you know you should be right. Period. Whether men deem it not okay. Whatever it may be. The most I'm not going to forsake you. The, the Lord just said it. It's that simple. We're going to leave it that simple. I'm not even going to try to dig too deep, get too many scenarios. It's that simple, man. I mean, like, this lesson is like people struggle with this all the time, but, like, at the end of the day, it's simple. Some things is just so simple. With your whole heart, if you're really doing what you're supposed to be doing and following the Lord, you're straight. That's all it is. Let's go to the book of Psalm. Damn, what is this? Uh, Psalm chapter 25. So lucky it slipped my mind. I started talking. Uh, Psalm chapter. Uh, so lucky. Uh, let me. I want to find it. So lucky. It slipped my mind. I started talking. There we go. Uh, Psalm chapter 37, verse number 25. Psalm chapter 37, verse 25. I have been young and now am old, 
yet have I so like yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed, man. It's a, I'm gonna read on. And his seed is blessed. It says, depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore, man. So uh, depart from evil and do good, and you're gonna dwell forevermore. Meaning what? Come out of the world, stay in this truth, and continue to try your best in this truth. Could try to continue to try to grow, continue to be sincere, continue to not, you know, just give up and be weak, and you're gonna dwell forevermore. I mean, take it up with the Lord, man. That's that's what the Lord said. Man. I mean, it is what it is. That's deep, All right? Let's read on. Um, verse 12 Woe to fearful hearts and faint hands And the sinner that goeth two ways Now woe to fearful hearts and to faint hands And the sinner that goeth two ways Let's get a precept Let's get 2nd Edra 6 Therefore, when it speaketh, be not afraid. Meaning what? Nah, no, no, we're not supposed to be afraid when all hell breaks, man. We're not supposed to be afraid. Me and we're supposed to rejoice and all these other things. But it naturally is going to happen. You naturally, you see a, a, a missile explode right in front of you. You see cars flying all over the place. You, you know, whatever. Naturally, you're going to get a feeling in your heart because it's not something you've never seen before. That's realistic. Right? But it's a part of training your mind to understanding these precepts when stuff like that come on. That's the whole point. That's what the Lord said. Uh, these things were written a fourth time for our learning seat. You follow? Because you read these things and it trains your mind to think a certain way. In righteousness, right? Now, it says, And therefore, when it speaketh, be not afraid. For the word, so like, yeah. for the word is of the end. And it says, And the foundation of the earth is understood. And why? Because the speech, it's like, it, it's like it, it says, let me read it. It says, And why? Because the speech of these things troubleth and is moved, for it knoweth that the end of these things must be changed. So that's the whole point. So don't be, like, like I read in Proverbs, don't be afraid when a destruction, or don't be afraid when you're at your lowest state, like it said in Sirach, because these things must be changed. You understand that? So, you know, being fearful and all these other things. Like in my first video, I touched on anxiety, man. Anxiety is, is fear, man. You understand that? Like, the most I'm not getting down with anxiety, period. And, and now, now, and I don't want to be insensitive because for me to be completely honest, I've never really dealt with anxiety on high levels like some people deal with. I will put that out there. But what I will say is the most I'm not dealing with anxiety. Because all throughout the Bible, you read about what? You read about not being fearful, right? You read about putting your trust in the Lord. And now, that's a simple statement that people say, but when you actually listen to it and you actually understand it, man, that's the exact opposite of, opposite of uh, what? Of, being, of having anxiety. You understand? So, now, the point is, you don't want to, um, you have an anxiety, don't continue to uh, think that uh, 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 nothing can help you. Or don't continue to think, you understand, that, um, that uh, you just, it's, just, it's due to your circumstance. Because that's how it goes with anxiety a lot of the time. Something happens, you feel it, and you can't deal with it once you feel it, right? To, in order to deal with mental issues like anxiety and depression and stuff like that, you don't just, you, you got to deal with the issue when it arrives, not just deal with the issue, you know, in general. Because that's actually how you deal with those mental issues, right? Because you know the precepts that say don't be fearful, right? But you know when certain things happen, you're going to be fearful. You learn how to check those spirits as soon as they come in the door. That's what the Bible teaches, right? Not how to just not be have anxiety or how to get rid of the feeling. You don't get rid of the feeling. You get rid of the feeling when it comes. You follow? So now, now let's make that make sense. Boom, right? Okay, I play football. Every time I get the ball and I hit the B-gap, it's a D-tackle right there, and I can't never get around him. He always hit me and it hurt, and I fall on my back. Okay, boom. Let's 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 uh make let's come up with a solution based thinking. Okay, boom. I'm gonna get the ball right, and I'm gonna fake like I'm gonna hit the C gap, and then I'm gonna come back at him real hard, and then I'm gonna hit him. I never I never said okay, boom. Somebody come move so he's not there. No, he's gonna be there. I'm gonna do something right, an action. 
unless it's somebody get to an action, and I'm gonna come back to it and I'm gonna attack it way harder. That's how you attack those kind of things. You understand that? Because I've been through depression and these type of things, and that's how you come up with it. Right? You know you're going through depression. Don't sit there and wallow in it and act like it's okay just because we're in captivity. Right? You might have anxiety. Don't sit there and wallow in it just because you act like it's okay and you think it's, it's you know what I'm saying, whatever it may be. Right? You de you deal with this situation as it comes. You don't just get rid of the situation. Right? That's how that's that's how the thing goes. Right? Okay. That, that's the counsel I'm gonna give. You. Let's read on. Let's start back chapter two. Uh, where was it at? Fourteen, Sirach two and fourteen. Woe unto you that have lost patience! And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? They that fear the Lord will not disobey His word, and they that love Him will keep His ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto Him, and they that love Him shall be filled with Thy law. That they that fear the Lord. Where people will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight, saying, We will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. So, as much as we put the most high up on the pedal, wow, wow, hold on, as much as we put the most high up on the pedestal, right, that's his mo that's the same way we should put his mercies up, right? The most high, <laughs> the one said, um. He the most high, that's with no ceiling. You understand that talking about, you know, it's the most high, so no ceiling, right? But the most high's mercies is so uh, in, in searchable, so innumerable, it's the same thing with his mercy, right? The most high is the most high God of all gods, for everlasting, from old unto now. You follow him for forever, forevermore. You understand? And that's the same thing with his mercy, man. So what that was talking about is like, when you fear in the Lord, you understand these things like, damn, he's merciful. I have no reason to just buck up and just say forget it. Because if I continue to try my best, I'm straight either way. And the law is not grievous. Brothers know that precept. First John 5, 3. You understand Deuteronomy uh, 32, 11 on down. You follow? We went over there to Deuteronomy 32 last video. These things aren't grievous. So as you continue to try your best, continue to try to keep the commandments, that's what it means to fear the, fear the Lord uh, correctly. You follow? And that's how you continue to uh, uh, grow in this truth. Continue to fear the Lord and acquire that wisdom that we're going to continue to read about in this uh, Cyrex series. And with that, Shalom, Meshach, Shalom, Mahabatham.